Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about Quasar Energy, basically gyrotron power drilling. So let's dive right into it because it's a deep topic. So what we are talking about is basically geothermal energy. Now one thing you have to understand, if you have quality geothermal energy, it is one of the best source of clean energy, meaning this puppy works 24 into 7 like exactly like how your coal power plant will work, how exactly your nuclear power plant will work, meaning this puppy is a base load power supply and if you can truly achieve it you can remove every single uh, basically green technology every single one of them like solar nope wind nope biomass nope biogas again from uh, like environment point of view you may want to still you know digest biogas so you know it uh, is less polluting but you get that point like it is king if you can achieve it now what about running out of it well inherently there is a boatload of energy trapped into the core and if you're going to siphon it off it's going to cool down but here's the deal the reservoir is so goddamn huge that it's going to take millions of years to siphon off like that's assuming you are extracting 100 percent of human energy directly from there and then you multiply that with multiple zeros then only you will reach a point where it's like earth is even gonna care and that's also after millions of years so the reservoir is too huge why it's so huge well it's talking about a planetary waste heat, meaning when uh, basically our dust cloud collapsed, it created sun. That was the first thing. What happened to other dust cloud, uh, dust ring basically after that point? They become into planets. So that creation creates a lot of trapped heat because every time they are bamming, 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 bamming gravity, it's uh, surrounded by vacuum. So heat is not getting away. So, but it is keep getting bombarded. All that energy is trapped into the core that will take eons to get out. And Again, there is a point where planet does cool down and the bigger the planet, the slower the cool down happens. That's why like uh, Mars has already cooled down. And on top of that, there is so much uh, radioactive stuff decaying that's creating enough radiation. Like, I mean, hardcore quality radiation that's going to take very, very long time to cool down. So we do not have to worry about it. It's one of those things that, yeah, it will eventually run out, but that eventually so far out, don't worry too much about it. Now, it does have one very big asterisk the asterisk is deeper you get the better it gets meaning if you are let's say three kilometers deep eh, five kilometers eh, six kilometers okay we can talk we can talk 10 kilometers now we are talking 20 kilometers deep. the end go home sweet dreams that's the whole point deeper you get the better it gets however the biggest issue is we ha do not have the technology to drill that deep flat out we do not like again for experiments for pushing it the boundary you can try that but good luck the cost will be ludicrous at that point in time so it's one of those things that we rely on nature to provide us the geothermal reservoirs so all the geothermal plants that you see they are reservoirs of geothermal meaning uh, due to tectonic plate shift there may be a magma uh, magma pipeline from the core to all a bit uh, closer to the surface there it may boil off the basically uh, underground water Water reservoir and that will come off at steam that happens some scenarios, some scenarios like basically they directly siphon of that steam to drive the turbine and then just send it back in uh, back down that's one way of doing it other times they have other things but you get that point like they, there is a reservoir there now consequence of that reservoir design is that how we are using geothermal right now they cool off meaning if you start to siphon off energy again it's not something that you're gonna cool down in like you know dig it but it is something you can cool down over course of let's say 10 years let's say you built a giant power plant and you are like you know sucking energy like there is no tomorrow over time it will cool down because the heat flux is so below it that there is a latency there basically it will take time to reach here so you are discharging it faster than you can refill it meaning it's not long term stable that's why like many places you will hear people talk, oh we made geothermal but it's like it was pointless we have to keep moving the wells after you know every few years that happens simply because you are not deep enough if you are deep enough meaning if you go close to 10 kilometer or even deeper than that at that point in time the heat flux that is coming from the core is so high that you cannot fundamentally drain it it's like yeah bro it's like no no at that point it's like no you cannot cool it off no matter how badly you try you will simply not be able to cool it off so that's the whole point that's the holy grail if we achieve that holy grail the end we do not have to worry about energy ever again like again that's so much energy we can literally extract co2 from the atmosphere make it into dry ice bury it under the ocean and never forget uh, you know never even think about uh, global warming that's how much energy is there perfect 24 into 7 base load baby power so what's the idea behind Quasar? Now Quasar, the idea is very simple. They want to go deep. And I mean their starting target is 10 km. They are not messing around. They are not like 4 km, 5 km, no, no, no. They are like start with 10 and their target is 20 km. Now why they are, you know, have such a large range? They will always talk about like, you know, 3 km to 20 km. Now here's the tectonic plate, the 
crust basically where we are on it's never uniform so some places you may luck out where you if you drill down to even as little as like five kilometers you'll be like dude we are set for energy because we have found a crack that is directly connected to weather it's not a reservoir it's a direct channel to the main resource you're like bro we set so three kilometers is like very optimistic some places you can do that and uh, if you are a really bad place you, let's say you are on top of a plateau or something like that go 10 to 15 and if you crack to 20 kilometer the end like 20 kilometer is like what we call superheated rocks meaning these rocks are so hot that water will turn into steam instantaneously like you put water it's very very high power like it's it's good it's good amount of energy there now if you can have that kind of that it works everywhere meaning there is no longer a geographical issue you will no longer have like oh this country cannot have hydropower because it does not have any rivers that does not apply it cannot do like you know x y or z no, nothing basically if you are on top of a uh, basically planet earth this will work it will only not work in mars and moon because again cores have cooled down uh, but here it's gonna work without any issue you do not have to worry about it and they're gonna utilize millimeter wave drilling technology because we did try to drill this ship reality is it's too goddamn expensive and oil and gas industry they have worked their ass off to reach these depths and they're really good at it like they have refined this technology as a technology point of view it's amazing what they can do but they have exponential uh, graph curve meaning if you uh, call them up it's like four kilometers they're like ah, i can do that in a few days five kilometers eh, it's gonna take like you know a few months uh eight kilometers yeah it might take two years so like what the hell happened again drill bit starts to break down the moment you start to use physical tool at that depth at that kind of pressure at that kind of temperature be mindful the basic temperature it starts to go as high as 200 or 300 degrees Celsius even diamond tip drill bits start to wear down and they wear down very quickly so you have to pull the pull up whole thing which could take days like what are you they doing yeah we are trying to pull up the drill bit that we have sent like you know uh, one or two or four kilometers down below now we are trying to pull it out replace it then send it back again again it takes idiotically long amount of time so that's why like drilling time and cost and everything else goes exponentially higher the moment you start to cross that four or five kilometer barrier so mechanical drilling simply will not work so they will use gyrotron gyrotron will use millimeter wave for drilling now this is the whole point they have gi giant as gyrotron they will have instead of that drilling pipe they're gonna have a waveguide that's gonna channel the energy and then you're gonna drill it and how deep again as long as you can transmit the energy you can keep drilling down so again there is no theoretical limit to how deep they can go practically 20 to 30 kilometers that's the waveguide efficiency so they can easily achieve 20 kilometer in principle and if this you know works the end you do not have to worry about solar you never have to worry about battery storage you do not have to think about anything ever again every country be it nepal be it pakistan be it sri lanka done go home sweet dreams that's the idea at least so why we are talking about millimeter waves like we think about drilling we think about lasers again we use laser in real world to cut through metal so what's the problem well millimeter waves are something that uh, lies between 30 gigahertz and 300 gigahertz now that gives them the uh, basically wavelength of 10 millimeters to 1 millimeter and that why is specifically called millimeter waves now millimeter waves is kind of new term but uh, do not uh, think too much about it it was always there in the electromagnetic spectrum is basically between infrared and microwave it was always there we just did not had a specific use case for it so it was like never uh, isolated as a band and now it's isolated as a band as a millimeter wave band now why do you want to use this exact band the first advantage this puppy has it does not scatter meaning uh, if your wavelengths are too long it will simply go through stuff not really that efficient if you want to drill them you want to you know deposit your energy if you can't deposit the energy what's the point if th that's the problem with long wavelengths so you cannot use radio waves and microwave what if your uh, you know wavelength is short like let's say infrared or even like you know visible light again everything will scatter it now you have dust you have rubble it will scatter it meaning your energy will not go down deep enough where you can do stuff so this wavelength is like perfectly good enough where it's like you know it will deposit the energy but it will not scatter easily so it's good it's like perfectly balanced then we come to the transmission and this is the goldilocks zone can you transmit infrared power to kilometers hundreds of kilometers absolutely we have optical fiber running on infrared that works that far issue is they are not talking about kilowatts of power they are talking about microwatts of power you cannot uh, go to a fiber optic manufacturer it's like yeah bro we want something that can transmit uh, let's say 10 megawatt they're like yeah no no 10 megawatt over a single fiber uh, for that long yeah that's not happening flat out not happening now how about microwave now microwave you're like bro we want to transmit 10 megawatt of power the microwave is like i got you fam how long yeah few meters there has the deep infrared has the distance in terms of uh, like you know how uh, long you can carry it microwave has the power 
but right in the between the millimeter waves they have the both of that meaning this puppy in principle again it has been built it has been tested it can easily cross 10 kilometer threshold meaning 10 to 20 kilometer is feasible without enough energy loss and uh, it can still also has the capacity, meaning not only it can go to 10 to 20 kilometers, it can also carry enough energy in it, meaning megawatts of energy. At that point in time, there is no rock, nothing that cannot melt. Like if you are pumping megawatts of energy into it, yeah, rock is like bye-bye. So that's awesome. And another uh, bonus effect is at molten rock, basically, if you are taking a rock, basalt rock, which are really brutal. And I mean, so brutal that uh, oil and gas engineers, they are like, the moment they hit basalt rock, they're like, who did I piss off? So it's like really brutal and the moment it starts to melt, basically again you are dumping that kind of energy, it will melt, it starts to absorb it more efficiently, meaning scatter uh, loss, meaning it, this starts to go down, meaning the coupling efficiency improves, meaning the amount of energy you are dumping into the system it starts to go down because you no longer need to dump the same amount of it, meaning it's absorbing it. Basically the coupling efficiency improves and ta-da, you're whole. So that's extra bonus. Now, can you make this? Here's the deal. You can make infrared lasers. That's awesome. Right? And let's say you figure out how, a way to directly, uh, you know, punch it down, like how you see in movies. Here's the deal. How the heck are you going to make the infrared? That's another issue. Can you make it? Yes. Uh, have we made infrared lasers or even any visible spectrum lasers uh, that are very powerful? Yes. We have like the highest power one is ultraviolet laser. So we have really high power one. And that is like, you know, used in initial fusion reaction. So we got the power. Only problem is it's very inefficient, meaning 20% efficiency is a, is a good day. Like you are really good day if you are reaching 20% efficiency. So meaning if you are running something that could be running for weeks or months or years, yeah, that kind of power bill is going to bankrupt you. This puppy basically can be created by gyrotron that is 50 plus percent efficient. Not amazing, but acceptable. That means if you need a 10 megawatt continuously for drilling, again, you will not need 10 megawatts at the surface. When you are like, once you start to go deep down, you need that, uh, you know, uh, you know, calculate for inefficiencies you need 10 megawatt upwards of so at that point again you are only needing to uh, connect a line that is 20 megawatt which is again significant but not impossible but again imagine if that was only 20 percent efficient good luck trying to find that electrical system and gyrotron of large enough power rating meaning can you just pick up a phone and be like hey amazon 24 hour delivery no the, none of the laser systems can be like you know here's a megawatt class laser yeah that, that does not say however gyrotron yeah you can order many of them exist many like there are many vendors that do this so that's why millimeter wave was chosen by this gentleman and i have provided six year ago video of this puppy and uh, it's 40 minutes long this whole system everything he goes down in detail so what about this tool, magical tool, the gyrotron tool? Now be mindful, this is a very complex equipment. It's way beyond my understanding, but the basic level understanding that I have figured out is that it's a hot filament electron gun, meaning you have something that emits electron, boat load of electron, and that electron is basically compressed into a cylinder using high field magnetic strengths, meaning superconducting magnet. What kind of field strength we are talking about? We are talking about something that makes MRI look weak. So seriously strong magnetic field and superconducting, then it compresses it. Now, during this time, it creates a what we call resonant cabinet, meaning photons will start to emit only if they are in exact same, uh, what you call excitant state, basically, they will only release in the spectrum that you want exactly like they are laser output now they have uh, mirrors that will you know collect the output send it outside a uh, diamond river this chamber has to be in vacuum like as close to vacuum as they you can make it for efficiency reason and then the electron literally will get into the collector's coil now this collector coil will get hot simply because well uh, the energy conversion is not 100 percent so 50 percent energy is dumped here now thankfully these collector coils are huge meaning taking the heat away it's kind of easy it's not a, a issue where it's like how the heck you cool this puppy you can cool it and i mean like these are something that is sold to universities uh, this is something that is used in uh, basically all uh, fusion reactors uh, this is how you achieve that you know 15 million degrees celsius how the heck you are achieving that that's how you are achieving it and again they even have waveguide that are like you know so this could be a uh, reactor is here the waveguide uh, this transmission uh, gyrotron could be here there would be a tube that is pumping upwards of like one megawatt or two megawatts of power through a pipe and it has almost no loss, almost no loss. So that's how we know how to make this puppy. This is a fusion reactor kind of turbocharged the development. This was as early as like 1980s, but right now it's like, you know, it's something that you can order and they come in a complete package. All you have to do is provide coolant, basically for the rejected heat here and cryogenics for the superconductor, electricity, done, plug, go home. And you, do, you also have the luxury of 
compiling most, most of them so for example let's say you need 10 megawatt but rather than buying one 10 megawatt unit which could be too expensive because one megawatt is like bulk order right now you can order like you know 10 small ones and that also gives you the benefit if one goes down your whole system uh, operation only slows down rather than shut down so that could also be a choice it can be done so these are tool set it's surprisingly well developed it's like we got this we have developed this for something else now what we can expect in the future this is one of those things that everything in principle works like every engineer every scientist who has worked on it everything about it is like yeah this works it's a simple concept it's like you have a waveguide that allows you to transmit the energy uh, very long uh, you have a spectrum that is really efficient at transmitting at very high capacity for very long distance everything about it checks out every test that has been run about it checks out everything about this is awesome however the main trick is in real world meaning can you achieve high transmission efficiency in real world? meaning depth now the issue is that this pipe the uh, waveguide has to be absolutely straight meaning exactly it cannot be even a little bit like i'm talking like millimeters of degrees uh, like you know few degrees here and there it's going to start to lose energy now how much energy loss would be there we don't know how much uh, deviation it can tolerate again some everything in real life has some tolerance to it but like how much we do not know and this is one of the things that only can be understood once you start to go long it does not make sense to test it out for like you know 10 meters or one kilometer you have to test it full length, meaning 10 kilometer. Only then you will know. And it has to be tested down below. So you understand. Like, because again, you are fighting through a rock. You are cooking these things. You are making them into gases and they are moving out. Will they move out uniformly? You don't know. Will they have a scenario where it's like, you know, something was harder on left side and uh, versus right side. Right side started to cavitate more and then your, uh, you know, waveguide started to drift. That uh, your waveguide is no longer efficient. So all of these things can only be tested in real life. Their assumption right now is that they're gonna have purge gas, purge gas, which is generally gonna be argon, and then argon gas will be blasted out, and that argon is gonna basically you gonna vaporize the surface, and argon is like you know cleaning the hole rather than using mud, which was used previously, and that's why mud does not work very deep down. So it does work without any bends. Everything is awesome. And the amazing desirable factor is that if done correctly, this molten rock could create a scenario where you can just bulking it up the uh, bore well wall. The wall could be basically become like a molten glass. So it's basically a rock layer that is acting as a casing. If done correctly, this will uh, remove the need for casing. And if that is achieved, the price of the bore well go down by 50%. That is very significant achievement. If that can be done, whereas like you do not need to worry about like how the heck we're gonna stabilize the well. The basically the molten surface is creating a basically molten cavity wall. That's like, I'm good enough. Again, that only be tested in real world, down, down deep below, then only you will know. So this is one of those things that if we can achieve super uh, money savings so your cost per well could go down from let's say 10 million dollar uh, to around 5 million dollar that's how significant that is but all these things rely on the real world testing of 2023 so it's not that far off but again uh, they will start out small obviously duh they will only start out with like one or two kilometers but then we have to hold our breath we do not we cannot get excited like oh they achieved five kilometers again anything that we can achieve by traditional drilling it's not that exciting the moment this or again it could be exciting if they can achieve five kilometers very efficiently whereas like you know we started the drill yeah in like you know two three days we achieved it. like again two three days is too fast uh but you get that point like they should be able to achieve it in like two weeks then it would be amazing at that point is like that's actually good enough for many things not for as base load power but for more than enough things is good enough so that's the future we really have to hold our breath for this purpose because if it works remove every single problem with global warming this is like infinite energy as close to as we can get so this was my presentation on gyrotron drilling technology hopefully you have liked it learned from it in that case please hit the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching